Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, you're listening to Pods of the Multiverse, Season 4. We're playing 5th Edition D&D, and I'm Jimmy, the DM for our game in Eberron. Joining me are three of my best friends. Hi, I'm Mandy. I'm playing the Green Warden, known as the Green Warden, who... Wouldn't you know it, a seven-foot-tall friendly rock monster is not very dexterous. <laughs> you say that as if, like, the other Green Wardens have names. They're all called the Green Warden. <laughs> well, if there are any others yeah. anymore. That remains to be seen. This is our Green Warden. Yes. It's special. It's special. My name is Jeppy. I play Alfonso Carlucci Roccatella, amateur bridge puncher and would really like a nice bag of holding right now. <laughs> uh, and I'm Scala. I play Istvan of Clan Gunvald. Or do I? Hmm? <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, don't forget to pick up your bags of holding. Where, where can you get those? Wherever... Your local magic item shop. Anyway, here's episode four. Last time, the Green Warden, with the help of Istvan and Alfonso, evaded capture by the agents of House Kundarak. They put up a stand in the jungle, stunning the Kundarak leader, Rizian, and scaring off his companions. Before too long, they came across a deep gorge spanned by a rope bridge. The Kundarak agents pursued them across, but turned back when Warden began strategically destroying the bridge. They found some Eberron Dragon Shard at an abandoned mining camp, discovered that they can determine a heading from the radio in Alfonso's bag, and started traveling in what they hope is the direction of Stormreach, while listening to a radio show about gangsters. Soon they were caught in a massive storm with thunder, lightning, floodwaters, and wind capable of uprooting trees and reshaping earth. After much struggle, they found adequate shelter to survive through the night. So, the storm subsided before dawn. The flooding has mostly receded, leaving behind knee-deep brown water that covers the ground in all directions. As the sun starts to shed its light, a thick haze rises over the water. The whole area is lightly obscured by fog. The water is difficult terrain. So, where exactly are you as you weathered the storm? What do you want to do this morning? I think Alfonso is getting his things all in order. I would imagine we're in some sort of covered, not quite cave, not super deep cavern kind of dwelling, which is dripping with water from the storm. Yeah. I think Alfonso will poke his head out, look around, and just see. Is it still drizzling? No, but it's very hazy, foggy. Okay, got it. You're almost wet still. Your clothes are not drying because of how just got humid it. and damp the okay. air is. Yeah. Alfonso will peek his head out. And I think the storm is over now, but... It does give me hope we are headed in the right direction, huh? Stormreach. It makes sense, huh? And what do you plan to do when we get to Stormreach? Istvan says, glumly looking into this smoldering ember of a fire. These damp conditions have not really been conducive to making a bigger fire that they could actually do some work with. Well, I don't think we should rob a bank, huh? But I do think an opportunity will present itself when we arrive. With our new friend in tow, surely we will meet some interesting characters. And, what more, you, surely we will find a forge for you to work with. I think this plan is most agreeable, huh? I don't know if I'd agree with that. What of your former traveling companions? Do you not wish to return to your company? I think we burned that bridge. Really, crumpled it, but so to speak. <laughs> So to speak. But my concern is that there'll be more of their ilk in Stormreach. People who are greedy and will want to make off with our new friend here. I know not what may lie in store for us ahead. But if the light above still guides us on this path, it is one I hope we will continue to walk together. I do hope that we do not part ways, but the problem remains. If we want to get back to Corvair, or what? What are we even doing out here? Well, not panicking, huh? That would be best. I think we should remain calm, but I do want to point out that the light has not been shining for quite some time. But again, we remain calm, we do not panic. The light, no here, but it is fine. We do not need the light. The radio, eh? Give us some insight. No, what we need is a plan. And I can't think of one. Mm, Calm yourself, the both of you. All I know is that I was trapped in those ruins for countless ages. 
You were the first two I had seen in many moons. And now I am free of that place. The graveyard of my brethren. This surely is a sign. Perhaps it is. As you're having this conversation, you start to hear something among you that God can't tell what direction it's coming from. But it's a buzzing sound, like a low humming. Like a mechanical buzzing or a natural buzzing? Make a perception check. Okay. 21. 16. 21 and 16. Excellent. Do you hear that? 14. All right. That is great. Before I tell you what you see, Istvan, on that good of a roll, give me a follow-up nature check. Only a 10. Even on a 10, you can tell that this is some sort of bug, probably. Mm. Uh Uh-oh. Buzzing. Humming. And all of you see, in among the air around you, little specks of bugs flying in every direction, and they start to swarm and coalesce into a bigger form until you see, right nearby you, a huge, thick, dense cloud of insects forming together. And it's approaching you. You said we did not have a plan, huh? I think our plan is to run away from this. This is not a good. Mm, I agree. Do you plan to punch the bugs? I'll swat as many as I can, but I think getting away is a good starting point. I literally carry nothing with me. I am already moving. Yeah, I'm going to run away. Okay. So it's difficult terrain. You're trudging through this muddy flood water. You said that three times. I didn't think anything of it. Here we are. (laughs) (laughs) And these bugs are floating above the water. They are coming right at you, and they look hungry. Roll initiative. Oh, no. 21. 7. 11. Okay. They rolled pretty bad, so you three are going to go first. We're going to start with 21. That's Istvan. All right. So Istvan's going to move in whatever direction is away from the bugs, but as they're moving that way, they are going to pull a couple hammers off their belt. I'm going to take a bonus action to activate my Kensei shot. The ends of these hammers start to take on this molten, fiery glow, and I'm going to puck two at them at the swarm of bugs. So the first attack is a 16. Does that hit? That hits. Okay. And the next attack is higher, 20-something. That hits as well. Nice. So this is going to be, on the first one, 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. And on the second, 10 more points of bludgeoning damage. So those hammers seem to hit the swarm, punch a hole straight through it, but you can see that the hole heals over very quickly, and you get the sense that that was not the most effective damage dealt. When the only tool you have is a hammer, as they say. Start swinging. (laughs) Well struck. Warden. I will also continue to move, and looking back towards this swarm, I'm going to go ahead and cast Chromatic Orb. You see a large sphere of multicolored energy gathered around in my hands as runes on my arms begin to light red. The sphere then bursts in fire as I huck this fiery chromatic orb, hitting a 22, I think, will hit. That'll hit, yes. That is going to be 14 fire. Nice. That seems like it definitely did as much damage as it seemed like it did as the fire spreads from one bug to another. <laughs> nice. Well, that certainly is a unique smell. Got anything else, Warden? That is going to be it for now. All right. And that's Alfonso. Oh, cool. They rolled lower than me. Damn. This hulking figure made of bugs is still lumbering towards you. Is it coalescing into like a big bug swarm shaped like a bigger bug? <laughs> that's a great idea. No, I was thinking it's kind of like... Or just... like a bug bear shaped swarm of bugs? Yeah, like just a big fucking monster that's coming towards <laughs> oh, you. Oh, shit. So they're at six in the initiative order. They rolled a six? It's your turn. Go. Yeah, it's definitely my turn. I'm going to do the same as everybody else. I'm going to use all my movement to get away. And then I'm going to turn around infiltrator armor mm-hmm. and I'm going to go pop an arm at him. Rolls a dirty 20. Mm-hmm. That hits. Awesome. The lowest damage I could do. Two ones. Oh, no. Blue dice. And it's that an add intelligence, so great. Seven total lightning damage. All right. Does it appear as if I do the exact amount of damage I was anticipating doing? It does appear that way, yes. Okay, that's what I thought it would appear like. I'm going to use my second attack to try and do more lightning damage. That will do exactly what it seems to do. 
All right, this is a 22. Yeah. Oh my god, a third one. That's six lightning damage. Oh, Yikes. No. That's my turn. Yes, it is. Okay, it's the swarm's turn. I mean, you tried to get away from this thing, but it can just glide right over the water. It's going to come right up to Alfonso and occupy Alfonso's space, swarming around him. And you start to feel these little bugs pelting your skin. And that is a 22 to hit. Ought to do it. Ought to be sufficient. Okay. That's going to be 14 piercing damage. Woo! Jeez. Yeah. This is a very dangerous swarm. This is not the monster manual swarm of insects. This is Zendrick edition. Watch out. I think you gave me the warning a little too late, but it's no matter. I'll be fine. I have Luciano and my armor. After those bugs land on you and bite on you, you feel an additional pain. You take four poison damage, and your maximum HP is reduced by four. You notice that these bugs that stung you also die. Oh. Mm-hmm. Arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs> it never gets old. Yeah. It's going to attack Alfonso one more time. All right. That, great. Oof, that's a 23 to hit. Yeah, that one also will hit. Okay. And, wow, that's mm-hmm. another 14. 14 piercing damage, and the additional poison damage does not happen. Okay. Well over half my health has been gone. All right. They're depleted in a round. Wow. And I don't have low health, so just to make that clear. It's fucking, like, goddamn man-eater bees or something. Jesus. Seriously. But you can see that the swarm is starting to get a little smaller than it was when it started. And we're back to the top of the order with this one. Yeah, these are the worst skeeters I've ever seen. <laughs> At the start of the round, ping, my hammers dimensionally jaunt back to my belt. They have like little bugs stuck all over them. Gross. Second verse, same as the first. Bonus action, activate my Kensei shot. The ends of the hammers light up molten hot, and I'm going to huck another pair of them at the swarm. Does a 15 hit? 15 does hit. Okay, both of my rolls were eights, so both of them hit. Excellent. So that's going to be nine bludgeoning damage. Sure. And 12 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Yeah, again, your hammers punch right through this swarm, and it heals over the hole after and your hammer lands on the ground. Yep, and I will continue to move away from this. That is Warden. Cool. <laughs> Alfonso, I'm coming. I'm going to turn around and move a couple of feet back towards Alfonso and lay some hands. I'm going to lay even 10 points of healing on Alfonso. And then as a bonus action, I'm going to also cast Shield of Faith on Nomi Stark here. (laughs) You see I stretch out my sword and around one of your arms, a spectral wreath of similar runes appear as the ones that are around my arms. You have now plus two to your AC. Ah, grazie mille, signore. This feels very good. Although, if you have more movement, I would suggest getting away, huh? These rocks have taken a bug bite or two. Allow me. I'm going to stay next to Alfonso. I tried to warn you, but this is what we have to do now, huh? And I'm going to cast Thunder Wave in the area. <laughs> so... Green Warden, make a con save, in addition to the bugs. I don't think you have to point it at me. It's a cube. You can point it away. Oh, I guess if if you're on the other side of... (laughs) Yeah. Okay, then cool. Well, then the bugs make a con save. Let's make a con save. Okay. That's a four, plus nothing. (laughs) Okay. You'll love to see it. That's what you like to see. They're going to take 14 thunder damage. Nice. Okay. As this thunder booms out, this hulking shape of bugs blows apart in every direction, and then it comes back together. A little bit smaller. <laughs> a good attempt. All right, that is them. They've got it. Alfonso in their crosshairs. They're going to continue going after Alfonso. Yeah, let's do this. It's a 10 to hit. It's going to miss, and that's the same roll. They miss again. Yes! Wow. Yeah, bad rolls. I am up to your tricks, huh? I know what you're doing. We're back to the top of the order. If someone wants to give me a perception check, I'll tell you how they work. Nope. Nope. Nine. I got a six. <laughs> bugs. Like bugs. Oh, yeah. They're still really swarming. They're angry. They're coming at you. It's this big, mean shape, and it's trying to kill you. And that's just fun. <sighs> All right. I've had just about enough of this. Ping. My hammers come back. I'm going to pull two of them off of my belt. This time I will not can say shot. I'm just going to throw a couple of them. Okay, I'm guessing a 10 won't hit. 10 does not hit. But a 20 will? 20 will hit, absolutely. Okay, only one. 
for 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, yeah. And then I'm going to run up towards the outskirts near where Warden is, and I'm going to spend a key point, and I'm going to flurry of blows and swat at these horse flies. <laughs> nice. So that is another two attacks. Okay, 16 and a 17 on the dice should do it. That'll do it. So that's going to be 10 and 6 points of bludgeoning damage. Still not magical, right? Yes, so that's 5 and 3. And are they stunning strikeable? I don't think they are stunnable. No, they're not stunnable. Makes sense because they're just a big swarm of creatures. Right, yeah, they are immune to almost every condition. That's going to be it for me. Okay, yeah. You did quite a bit of damage to the swarm, and we are to Warden now. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cast Chromatic Orb again. Same damage type, fire damage. Mm -hmm. See if I can get a section of this swarm that is not surrounding any of my allies, and I roll 23. That's going to do it. Gotta love these D8s. Good for spells and smites. That is 15 points of fire damage. 15 points of fire damage. Yes, effective. You see a bunch of bugs burn up and scatter away and fall out of the air. And that will be my turn. All right. Alfonso. I'm afraid you're too close for Luciano to do an umber on you. So here we go again. Thunderwave con save. Bring us home, we won. I have every intention. It's a 16. Pass. Six, so you need three thunder damage. <laughs> Damn. Okay, you see this part of the form of the bug body bolt out and come back together. Anything else? All right, this swarm is going to take an attack against Alfonso first, and that is 19 to hit. Yeah, it is. With the plus two still hits? Yeah, it hits. Damn. Okay, and that hits for 16 piercing damage. Get <laughs> the fuck out of here. Yeah, and oh my god, wow. I'm really good at rolling d6, you guys. That's 12 more poison damage. Holy Jesus! Shit. Which you take as reduction to your maximum HP. <laughs> what a <laughs> god! Kill that? That's why I was trying to get in front of these things. Wow. These things are not interested in whatever you're made of. They're looking for blood. You're in most single digits. Okay, with its second attack, it's going to go after Istvan, because you're now... Don't send the yeah, you don't have to fucking attack. pull punches here. It's swarming. I mean, the plan was to go after both of you. If the bugs are coming after me, they're coming after you. You went, no. A bug is going to go after Istvan, because Istvan now has approached and is attacking from up close. They've presented themselves as a target. So, bug is attacking Istvan. Okay. And that is 18 to hit. Armor class is 19, because I used Ooh. an unarmed strike. Actually. Okay, nice. Yeah, a few land on you, but you're able to swat them and move out of the way and brush them off. Be gone, you pests! And that's the top of the order, Isvan. This thing's looking smaller than it was when you started. All right, it's time for the big fly swatter now. I grab me Warhammer off me back. I'm going to take some swings with that. <laughs> Isvan narrating there. <laughs> I grab me Warhammer. No, this is a kind of fourth wall breakery that is very good in this game. I like it. Yeah. Fourth wall breakery. <laughs> 25. <laughs> yes, that hits. So that's going to be... Did you roll me dice? I did roll me dice. I rolled a 9, and I add 4 to that. So that's <laughs> 13 <laughs> points of bludgeoning damage. All right. And I'm not done yet. And that's a natural 20, it is. Uh-huh. Get it. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I feel this next hit is going to be a big one. I can just feel it. Look at this one. Senior Warden, look. It's going to be a good one. I see. Yes. Mamma mia, bring it home. Yes, Alfonso's fucking bleeding from every fucking pore. <laughs> Alfonso's covered in insects head to toe. <laughs> About to die, and he's like gassing up his body. <laughs> Your optimism is quite astonishing to me. Get on with it, eh? I am being stunned here. Attack them. 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Does this disperse them? No, it does not. Perfect. Okay. Then I'm going to take a bonus action and make an unarmed strike. Okay. I go over to Alfonso and I try to Wing Chun style with the very flowing motions shoo all of these bugs off. If you crit fail this, I feel like I'm going to take the damage. It's a 5% chance. Let's do it. Uh, 17 hits, yes? 17 hits. Okay, so I do not swat Alfonso. I swat the bugs for an additional 9 points of bludgeoning. 
Very good. That's Warden. Do not worry, Alfonso. We are standing with you, bugs or not. I am going to use my action to swing my greatsword. Do we don't... There's no way we can get some sort of, like, flanking with this swarm, is there? What would be, like, the rules as written ruling? On Generally, the-, the way swarms used to work... They have all-around vision, so they can't be flanked, right? They've got eyes all over the place. There are eyes everywhere. Yeah. Just like Mother, back when I was a little kid. I was just asking you, it's fine. Well, no, but it kind of feels like, to me, something that's intentionally left big. I would tend to say, yes, you can flank it. I mean, Skelly, you're referencing like third edition, right? Yeah, this is a third edition rule, so you don't have to abide by that. Yeah, so I would say that I'm not aware of anything in fifth edition that says you can't flank this swarm. Yeah, I'm not either. So, so I would say you probably can. Cool, I'm going to do that. Okay. And an 18 will hit. Yes, it will. And as it does, I'm going to use Divine Smite. Okay. Because I really don't want Alfonso to get bitten any further. Reroll those ones. Cool. So that is 12 slashing damage, which I assume is halved, but 11 radiant damage. Okay. Is the swarm dispersed? The swarm is very, very small now, but it is still there. See, I can heal Alfonso, or I can try and destroy it. I can't do both. Please, get this worm off of me. It hurts. I do not want him to be around any much longer. Oh, I don't want him to go down. Oh, I don't want him to go down. Okay, I'm going to do it. As a bonus action, I'm going to use a quickened spell and cast another chromatic orb. Okay. Nice. Because you might not even heal me enough to save me from the next one, so just kill him. Probably not. So just to make sure, I'm going to use a second level chromatic orb. And that is a 19 on the dice for a 25. Uh, yeah. All right! Scorch him up! Some pretty bad rolls. 16 fire damage. 16 fire damage. And you burn right through this swarm, and the last few flitter away aimlessly as this swarm disperses. Oh, thank fuck. <sighs> Let that be the end of them. I did not think our travels would present such a challenge in the form of bugs. Oh, there are a great many things in these jungles, Alfonso. Let us hope that these have returned to the earth in which they came. All right, we exit initiative. I don't suppose it can get any more miserable, but I've spoken too soon on that subject before. Are you in need of more healing, Alfonso, before we move further? Ah, see, si. Desperately. Please. Per favore. Doesn't Alfonso have healing spells also? <laughs> I have lesser restoration. I have a healing word. Oh, well. Mending, which is not... All right, and you're at single digits. You're wicked low. I have five health. Okay. When does the poison wear off, by the way? I'll tell you. Thank you. I don't want to spend another second level spell slot this early, so I'm just going to do one for now, maybe two, depending on how good I'm about to roll of cure wounds. I forgot how fucking bad healing spells are. Okay. Okay, that's an 8 on the D8. You gain 12 more health back. Ah, allora, I'm ready to go now. This is much better. Mm, I'm glad to hear it. Grazie mille. We hope if we get out of this bog, we can take a minute to catch our breaths. Roll a survival check. See if you can find some higher ground. 14. 15. Natty, 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on those rolls... Absolutely. You can see that the water is running downhill a little bit, going towards the source of the water. You eventually find some higher ground. And this is all sort of rapid terraforming from that storm, right? That we're even in this climb in the first place? Yeah, you're in like a swamp now. Jesus, that's so wild. (laughs) But we're on higher ground. Can we see anything discernible in any direction that we should head toward? No, and you're pretty certain of that. On rolls that good, you're pretty certain that you still are very much lost in the jungle, but you were able to find higher ground so that you're not literally standing in stagnant water. Okay. So, that's good at least. How would you like to proceed? So, as I was saying, the light in the sky is goes poof. There's no more. But, new friend, Signore Warden, 
What would you prefer we do? We can't even see the river anymore that we were following. There's really no sense of direction anymore. The swamp that you were walking in kind of is the river. Mm. Yeah, and just generally, you should not trust any sense of direction in this place. You could walk in the same direction and get turned around completely without noticing it. All right, this might be a long shot, but given the time that I had to myself during the last long rest, I contemplate the will of the ancients, and I'd like to make some sort of religion check to see if I can get any kind of sign as to the direction in which we are supposed to be going. Go ahead and roll a religion check. That is going to be a dirty 20. A dirty 20. So what are you actually doing? I take out my greatsword and using green flame blade, I wave my hand over it and light it in green flame as I point it up into the sky. Ancients of the earth and sky above. Make clear your chosen path before me. Okay. You feel a slight pull at your blade, and it turns and points directly at Alfonso. And from Alfonso's bag, you hear a radio signal. (laughs) No shit. You hear a little bit of static. (laughs) Yes. Oh, give me a second here. Let me pull this out from my bag. Again, I think this radio is going to be very helpful on this journey. Straight. I pull the radio out of my bag and fidget with the dials, and the static comes to life, I presume, DM? Give me an Arcana check, Alfonso. Nat 20 plus an 8 modifier, 28. Woo! <laughs> Hot damn. Yes. Dang. Yeah, wow. You're really good with this thing. Is it serious XM now that I rolled that high? <laughs> yeah, you're getting Howard Stern. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't say Joe Rogan, right? Thank God. Yeah. Sorry, Spotify. <laughs> Shit, yeah, cut that, cut that. <laughs> Okay, we'll do. Spotify's not listening to this. On that roll, you can very easily discern which direction the radio signal is coming from. And it says, You're listening to House Tivis Radio Storm Reach Service. Previously, Von Nick, Kavitapi, and Brug were hired by the boss to carry out a heist. The boss introduced them to Paunchy, a rogue banker, and Pinchy, a getaway driver. So this is Paunchy. Okay, so, Von Nick will disguise themselves as someone who has legitimate business in the bank. Brug and Kavitapi will accompany them as uniform security. They'll get the teller to open the safe, and then knock out the teller and the guard. They'll empty the contents of the case of gold coins, totaling exactly 10,000 GP into a bag of holding, sponsored by Bag of Holding. They will leave the bank and signal Pinchy, the getaway driver. Any questions? I think it all makes sense to me. It's really pretty much easy on my end. You just shoot, I mean, knock the people out. Not even a problem. What he said. Okay. So, let's lay some groundwork here. I give you 100 gold for supplies. Anything specifically you picked up? A couple bags of holding. A couple of bags of holding? Those cost more than 100 gold. Also, they were being provided yeah, for they us. Do. Yeah. Yeah, they gave you one bag of holding for this job. If only I had enough money to buy another. They're so good. That's the thing. Now, I'm going to keep the scratch as best I can. I ain't buying nothing. I got my sniper rifle. I'm good. So, then I'll ask you this way. What are Brug and Kavitapi wearing to this? I wear my suit wherever I go. And then I'll grab, like ink or whatever nearby and just write security on my suit (laughs) okay (laughs) excellent very good it's uh allow me i take out my disguise kit and perhaps i could create some more official looking credentials with that excellent all right so that's gonna be a 19 disguise kit roll excellent hey uh That looks pretty good. You got any more of that? Well, they don't call me name tags for nichts for nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Kavitapi will give a little flick on his shiny new name tag. You did pretty good work here, kid. I'm not going to lie. This is good stuff. Danke schön. I'll make one for Brug as well. Excellent. So we got Brug, we got Kavitapi. They are wearing similar outfits now. Please, wait, uh, Salvador. All right, the Brug thing is sort of an alias. I believe they call it a nom de cream. I mean, the other one's sort of an alias. I scratch my head because I can't remember which is which sometimes. (laughs) Hurt himself in his confusion. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think my favorite terrain can just be banks? I mean, urban is a favorite terrain. Is it? Yep. I think so, yeah. Oh, I'm going to take it. All right. And Vanish, what do you look like today? Vanish's probably would have gone out and gotten a proper business suit for this endeavor but honestly one that's still a little shabby looking Mm -hmm. 100 gold doesn't get you that far in terms of quality right maybe i bought cheap sunglasses security (laughs) guards always have sunglasses 
Sure. That's great. Yeah. And if I may, maybe those ugly blue and orange tinted ones you get at Walmart that like lots of cops use. Cop glasses. Cop glasses. Cop glasses. So I'll spend, I don't know, whatever, five gold or whatever it is to get cop glasses. I don't think it's nearly that much. You could probably get two sets of those for one gold. Yeah. (laughs) Jeez. Wow. I buy two sets, one for Brug and one for me. Perfect. They barely fit around Brug's head. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is as good as I'm going to look. And I think it's pretty damn good. Huh? Let's uh, get going here. They sort of sit on my nose like pins nez. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And what about your face, Von Nisch? Von Nisch is going to wave a hand in front of their face and take on the appearance of Heward of Heward's Handy Haversacks. Insane. <laughs> Insane. I know that this barely qualifies as a business person, what with the inferior products that they peddle, but I think it will be enough to convince these people that I have legitimate commerce in this bank. And we're by no means saying that this guy's a criminal, but we're also not not saying it, you know what I mean? (laughs) What with hawking a product at such a high rate and it ain't even as good as a bag of holding. Equivalent to highway robbery, you ask me. Anyway, speaking of highway, let's get this show on the road. Let's go. All right. So the three of you and Pinchy are sitting in Pinchy's Sky Coach. This is a 70s style town car Sky Coach, black with a big front end. And he's sitting on a little wooden box. His feet don't really touch the floor. And he's holding on to reins. That's how you drive a Sky Coach. <laughs> Sit inside and hold on to reins. And so you're moving slowly through traffic, weaving in and out other Sky Coaches and flying creatures. Pinchy pulls back on the reins, and the Sky Coach lowers down in between some towers onto street level, leaving the sunlight behind you. This is a very dim street. And Pinchy looks to you, Von Nisht, in the front seat. Where should I let you out? Right at the door, my friend. All right. Give me a perception check. Oh, that's a good roll. 23. Excellent. Yeah, on a 23, this street is dim and cramped. The buildings are made of old, dirty bricks and water-stained stones. And there's someone sleeping on the ground nearby. And so as you pull down out of the sky coach traffic, there's a couple of people pulling carts, maybe one horse-drawn carriage somewhere. But this is not a glamorous city street by any means. Well, this looks like the place I would bank. How's the Brelish accent? I've been working very hard on it. <laughs> Excellent. Wow, that's pretty good. Doc, uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Could have had me fooled, man. Huh? So Pinchy pulls up and parks in front of this windowless building with a steel door. There's a Kunderak insignia above the door and an overweight orc in a Kunderak uniform standing beside the door. Sort of wearing, you know, a short sleeve button-down shirt with epaulets, badge. His shirt is tucked in, but it's really straining. You can see a little bit of his belly. And you rolled really well on that perception check. Give me a follow-up insight check. 21. Yeah, wow, that's excellent. Yeah, rich and powerful people do not do business here. I think Ponchi described it as a common currency changer. This is where people withdraw their wages. This is where they pay down their loans. You can trade banknotes for coin or vice versa. You make deposits, withdrawals. This is not a fancy bank by any means. There's two people waiting in line. They look kind of shady. How do you want to approach? Well, come on, my friends. Let's get a move on. Not even a problem. I step out of the coach and I get into line. All right. I'll stand on one side. Von Nitsch. And I'll stand on the other. Excellent. Yeah, Pinchy zips away after he lets you out. After a short while, the door opens, a person walks out, counting banknotes, and the next person goes in. And it's just you, and there's a ragged-looking half-elf online in front of you. And after a little while of waiting, door opens again, another person comes out, and this little half-elf holding a single banknote walks inside. And you walk up to this guard. He looks at you, Von Nish. Name? Heward. Heward. And what's your business with House Kunderak today? I've just come to make a deposit. Astonishing that I'm able to deposit any money, what with the... (laughs) No. (laughs) What with the cut-rate extra-dimensional pouches I sell, but some people are easily gulled into parting with their hard-earned money. Oh my god. I don't know nothing about extra-dimensional pouches. (laughs) Roll a deception check. Sure. I'm theoretically good at this. Fifteen. Yeah, he rolled a two. He believes you. He doesn't know who you are. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> he doesn't know anything. <laughs> I just give like a chin. Hey. <laughs> to, to the, yeah. Security. We get each other. Yeah, so he looks at you, Kavatapi. He looks straight up to you, Brug. He looks back to you, Von Nish. These two with you? Yes, they are. A person who has so many unsatisfied customers as I do <laughs> needs to go around with some muscle. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> No lie, this voice. 
This voice sounds like <laughs> when a British person is doing like a Midwestern American accent. <laughs> He's so good. How Civis really needs to implement a code of conduct on their airwaves. <laughs> this is slander. All right, so Brug and Kavatapi, you've got to roll either deception or performance. I'll give you that with advantage because of how good the disguise is. Uh-oh. Okay, going deception, 12. Your boy Brug got a nat 20. <laughs> nice! <laughs> Plus one. Yeah, so when you give him that up nod. Yeah, 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 yeah. He gives one back to you. Hey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell, even just on passive insight, he definitely resonates with security type guys. Okay, well, my passive insight is a seven, so that's great. <laughs> yeah, you're not seeing that. You just think he likes you. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So the door opens again. The shabby little half-elf from the line comes out just holding one single gold piece tightly in his hand. <laughs> oh, no, this poor guy. Yeah, and he disappears into a nearby alleyway, and then... The guard opens the door, holds it open for you. And as you walk inside, he says, Just do me a favor, leave your weapons right there by the door. Sure. I take the rapier off my belt and I give it to the guard. Is it possible I could roll sleight of hand to try and conceal the dagger? Yes. Hot damn, 26. Yeah, on a 26, you could keep both weapons if you think you can manage. Yeah, I don't know. The rapier seems like it'd be a bit hard. I think Von Nichts would only try to hide the dagger. You're just referring to them, right? We don't got to take our weapons. We're security. That's kind of a tall order. Roll persuasion. 13. I give you my assurances. These are, oh, excuse me. <laughs> no shit! <laughs> I give you my assurances. These are eminent professionals. They can be trusted to not misuse their tools of violence. What's your deception modifier, Funnish? Plus seven? Yeah, that's fine. He didn't even notice the little accent That'll do slip. It. Yeah. <laughs> On that little bullshittery there, Kavatapi, go ahead and add some advantage to that roll you made before. Okay, now it's a 17. Yeah, he kind of narrows his eyes at you and then goes, I get it. I feel naked without mine. And he pats his holster. Oh my god. Yeah. It's a security <laughs> guard thing. The job never leaves us. Am I right or am I right, huh? I think you're right. But you keep yourself strapped, kid. It's not even a problem. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like what this episode is saying about King Guns. Yeah, that's fair. But, you know, you don't take life lessons from Kavitapi. All right, fine. Just do me a favor. Just leave them by the inside of the door when you get inside. You know, the tellers get jumpy. Yeah, that seems more than reasonable. I'll hold up my end of the deal. Not even a problem. I believe you. I won't. <laughs> Yeah, he holds the door open for you. Inside we go. Okay, yes, the door slams behind you, and that guy outside would have no way of knowing if you actually left your weapons by the door. I didn't. You see a room that is about 30 feet across, probably. There's a desk in the middle of the room. A couple of ever-bright lanterns and iron fixtures shed light on this scene. There's a dwarf sitting behind the desk with her eyes down, writing in a ledger, and there are two empty chairs in front of the desk. Behind the desk, just as promised, there is a hallway opening, but you see no guard. Without looking up, she says, Come in, come in, sit down. I oblige. Okay. I'll stay standing, looming over Von Nich. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? Still looking down. I'm here to make a withdrawal. Withdrawal. Name? Heward. Heward. You have an account number? I do. It escapes my memory at the moment. I don't suppose you have some records you could look it up in? I could look it up at the end. How much are you taking out? I will have procured some banknotes with whatever money was left over from me buying the suit. And however much that is, I'll put on the table. All right. Yeah, so you put these banknotes on the table. She takes this. What, are you making a deposit or a withdrawal? Withdrawal. I give them the banknotes and we take the gold. I see. Gold standard withdrawal. Okay. So how much did you just put down on this desk? I don't know. How much did my suit cost? A set of fine clothes. That's 15 gold. Okay, so it would have been 85 gold pieces worth of banknotes is what I put on the table. Okay, yeah. So she um, sort of takes this little device out of the desk. It looks kind of like a square magnifying glass, and she runs it over the bills, and uh, this, these little purple numbers on them sort of light up. And While she's doing this, I don't mean to be a bother, but I noticed the usual security isn't in place. Is there a reason for that? I want to make sure that my my currency, what little of it I have, is <laughs> secure. Yeah, I'm sure he's back there somewhere. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I'm going to roll a perfunctory insight check. I would like uh, to and, also do... Uh, actually, and, can, I, can, I give, uh, can I give Heward the help action by uh, sort of looking over my <laughs> Pinsnez uh, cop sunglasses around the room once? Excellent, yes. 
Sure. Okay, that's much better. 22 Insight. Yeah, on a 22 Insight, she looks up at you, kind of makes eye contact with you for the first time. And then I kind of cough, I go... (coughs) (coughs) Anyway, on a 22, that might have been a little bit of a suspicious thing to say to her. (laughs) Should I roll Deception? I'm trying to keep it a little mundane. I don't think the Deception is necessary here, after the fact there. Okay. Okay, so let me just go into the office and we'll look up your account number and then we'll be able to get you on your way. So she gets up from the desk, she walks back down the hall, opens up the office door and goes inside. The door closes behind her. No. No what? (sighs) (laughs) I mean, we have to meta this out, right? There's no one else in the room? In the room with you right now? No. Now, you morons. Are you talking to us? I think he wants us to take the stash. I start walking towards the door in the back of the room. Rug, 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 wait, wait. Remember, the vault door can only be opened by a key which is in the possession of that young lady who went into the office. So we must... Where do you think I'm going? I think it's perfectly reasonable for us to wait for her to come back. After an uncomfortable amount of time, the door opens once more. Missed our fucking chance. (laughs) And the teller walks out. With the guard behind her. There it is! The teller walks over and sits back down at the desk, and the guard takes a look at you, Brug, and says, Oh, hey, Sal, I see you also got a steady gig. Good on you. Oh, no. (laughs) Wait. (laughs) Wait. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) Oh. Do I recognize this person? (laughs) Roll insight. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Jesus Christ. That's a 10 minus 2, 8. I don't know. Maybe you've seen this guy before. On an 8, you've done a couple of legitimate security jobs in the past, but you don't remember who this guy is. Oh, uh, hey, what's up? He just goes back to his work. Yeah. The teller (laughs) speaks up. I couldn't find an account by someone of the name of Heward, although there is one Heward. You're not the Heward of Heward's handy haversack. (laughs) It gives me some small measure of shame to admit that I am. (laughs) I hope you haven't had any issues with my product. This is getting ridiculous. It is. That's the... Yeah. yeah. I'm committing to the bit. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) But, like, the fact that the reaction from Heward is immediately... Have you had any issues? (laughs) Self... Complete (laughs) self-deprecation. Come out and admit it. This show isn't going to finance itself. I must commit to the bit. You do a really good job. That's what we say in the business. Commit to the bit. Vanish, roll deception with disadvantage. Fair enough. (laughs) I'm telling you guys, you missed our fucking chance. It's only an 11. She looks at you. Why would someone as rich as you be doing business in a dump like this? Ma'am, if I may for a moment, please. And Uh sir, not to speak on your behalf, but as your security detail, I figure... I'm not a sir. Oh, wait. Yes, I am a sir in this particular instance. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> this particular instance, you absolutely are. Sorry, excuse me. Okay. I forgot I was in disguise. So the thing of it is, is that what with bags of holding doing as well as they've done recently, Mr. Hewitt here has fallen on hard times. And the thing of it is, Brug and I are kind of mid-tier security. It pains me to say. I don't even like to admit it. To be honest with you, I got a bit of a pride issue myself. But the thing is, that's where we're at. And this gentleman here now needs to do his business in a less reputable, albeit great, fine-looking establishment such as your own. That's kind of the situation. And I figure I should address the elephant in the room. I got this big gun right here. You probably noticed it. Just want to let you know that God gave me permission. And that's, again, just because I'm kind of mid to your security. Not really a big deal. But again, it's not even a problem. Roll deception. That help? (laughs) (laughs) What do you want me to roll? (laughs) Deception. It's all deceptions, yeah. I don't think it helped. Okay, it's actually an 18. Wow, yeah. I thought she rolled pretty good there, but yeah, 18. She looks back to you, Heward. Oh, Mr. Heward, I had no idea. Please excuse me. I didn't realize that business was so bad. I mean, I've (laughs) heard that the Heward's handy haversack is a bit of an inferior product when compared to the bag of holding, but I had no idea it was this grim. I'll go ahead and get your 85 gold and you can be on your way. She stands up and fishes a key out of her pocket and goes over to the vault and unlocks the door. I'm going to follow her. Okay. The guard says, hey, where are you going? I'm going to collect my investment. Now you wait right back there. The teller goes in the vault. 
You wait there. She gets the door unlocked. She goes inside and leaves the door swinging open. How about you do us a favor? You stay here and you just don't pay any mind to Mr. Hewitt here. (laughs) He's trying to save his business. If I were DM, I would make you roll deception with like 5x disadvantage. (laughs) No, I was just going to say intimidation. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Thank you. Roll intimidation. Yeah. One of the very, very, very few skill checks at home with negative two. That's going to be a 17. Nice. You doing okay, Sal? I'm doing fine. Uh, is everything above board here? Oh, yeah. Sal and I have been working this job for a little while now. I think now may be the time. You know I'm on the level. And I'm just going to fucking punch him straight in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is above board where Hugh and Sandy have a sex are involved. <laughs> <laughs> Our war okay. So go ahead and make an attack roll. Oh yeah. Cool. <laughs> so I've got tavern brawler feet. Yeah. So that's gonna be nineteen plus seven. Jesus nice. Christ. <laughs> I might actually kill this man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to try not to. It's melee. You can choose not to. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be non-lethal. And I'm going to go ahead and use my superior fighting style. I'm going to trip attack him with this punch. I'm going to try and knock him flat on his ass. And he's got to make a strength save for me. Uh-huh. That's a four. Cool. That's a fail. Mm-hmm. And he's going to take... 15 bludgeoning damage. He is out cold. Describe how you hit him. (laughs) Like I said, I just said, don't worry, I'm on the level. And I just fucking haymaker him straight in the (laughs) face. And he fucking flies backwards on the ground. (laughs) Where's the teller in all of this? The teller is inside the vault with the door open. She's in the vault. Okay. And I just turned to my two associates. No. I think you did good, kid. Yeah, so this guard is in a heap on the floor. It was surprisingly quiet, other than the loud thud of actually hitting him and him hitting the floor. He didn't get any words out. (laughs) Yeah. So that was, you you did that pretty good. (laughs) Let's roll initiative for this bit here. I didn't even know we were getting to this this game. This is delightful. Yeah, this is wonderful. Four. Yikes. Only a six for me. Nineteen. Really? Jesus Christ. (laughs) The fucking bank building itself will go before we do. (laughs) (laughs) Brug is ready to go. Okay, so that's a six and a three? Four. Excuse me. I rolled a three on the die. What can I say? Not good. I I rolled a seven as the teller, so wow. Teller's a commoner. All right, Brug's up first in the order. What are you going to do here? Well, I don't know. Is there a way I can just move this unconscious body somewhere where nobody's going to see it? Under a table or behind a wall or something? Uh, yeah, I think we could... I don't want to put that. it in the hallway where the uh, sort of, you know, convergence of events is going to happen here, but I also yeah, no, I, don't want her to walk I, out and see it, so. I think give me either a sleight of hand or perception, something you can cool, sell. Cool, on. cool. Yeah. We'll call this sleight of hand. <laughs> That's a 12. I mean, yeah, I think you could probably shove him under the desk. That might be adequate. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> There's not a lot else in this room unless you wanted to drag him back to the office. But that's probably in view of the vault at that point. So. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just going to do that and then wait for these two fucks. All right, so you put this unconscious guard under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take his weapon off of him if I can grab it as well. Yeah, you can do that. And it is the teller's turn. The teller walks out of the vault and standing in the doorway, she sees the three of you standing around suspiciously close to the hallway. (laughs) Is everything okay out here? It's a very fine hallway you got here, ma'am. Everything's fine. No need to be alarmed. (laughs) Why would you say that? (laughs) Are you sure about that? (laughs) Can we just take a quick snapshot of what's going on? There is a fucking ogre in a suit. There is a guy with a sniper rifle, and then who she believes to be a business magnate with a suspiciously vanished guard from her own bank, and that person says, everything's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Unprompted. Look, if it works for Han Solo. It didn't work for Han Solo. Roll fucking deception with disadvantage. Sure. (laughs) The lower of those rolls is a 21. Holy shit. What? Shameling. (laughs) Changeling Rogue! I can sell water to a fish, Changeling Rogue! You could also sell 
Mm. Nope. <laughs> I can sell handy haversacks to adventurers. Nobody can sell handy haversacks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's the brand. Bag of Holding just nails it. It's just so... It tells you exactly what it is in the title. They really do. Yeah, so she's convinced, I guess. She's holding a case of gold in one hand, and she is fishing for her keys with the other hand to lock the vault once more. But she's having a bit of a hard time finding them. Come top, you're up. Man, may I assist you with that? Being a security guard, I do have these nimble fingers. I could root out that key, no problem. Excuse me, it would not even be a problem. <laughs> no, I think I got it. Thank you, sir. Sorry, it's just that, you know, I went into this line of work because I felt a moral obligation to help my fellow human being. And other matters of humanoid, for that matter. He's getting off script again. What the fuck is going on? Anyway, I would be inclined, nearing, bordering <laughs> insistence upon helping you, ma'am. All right, well, persuasion. I'm going to put... Okay, well, you said persuasion? Yeah. Finish that oh. sentence! No, what no, were you going to no. do? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I was going to put my hand on the sniper rifle, but if you're going to be persuasion, we don't, we don't need to go intimidation just yet. Okay. Nat 20. Okay. Yes! 22 total. <laughs> what is happening? I kind of wanted to fail it because I wanted to go to the intimidation route, but anyway. We're supposed to be a bunch of bumbling idiots and this heist is going off without a hit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> so anyway, it's a 22. What happened? Yeah, it is a 22. Shit. <laughs> Wait, you want to help me fish my keys out of my... I want to take the keys from her to help her find the right one. And then I'm just going to take them. Okay. <laughs> she hands you the whole ring of keys. It's got a few keys on it, but she tells you. The one you're looking for is a big cartoonish key-looking key with a few teeth. Cartoonish, huh? I guess this establishment is a bit of a joke. You're telling me. Anyway, thank you, ma'am. I guess I'm gonna knock her out with the butt of my rifle. Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, right? Like, what other option? Roll a melee attack. Okay. That is a 14 to hit. That'll hit her. <laughs> And what would this damage be then, I guess? I'd say it's a club, so let's do 1d4 plus strength. Were we warned about some sort of alarms? It's five punch damage. Yes, if anyone but the teller opens the door. Right. The door's still open. The door's still open. Yeah. Right. Right. Amazing. Simply amazing. Yeah, five knocks are out. Okay. I'm real sorry, ma'am. But hey, I didn't shoot you. And for Kamatapi, that's kind of a big deal. You should be on it. You're talking to an unconscious woman. I'm talking to the unconscious body. Okay. Yeah, so she's knocked out in the doorway of the vault. And I'll tip my sunglasses at the body when I say you should be on it. You got some real problems, man. Hey, you're the one that just knocked out your own friend. I think I'm pretty above board here, if I'm being honest with you. But look, I ain't going to come at you anymore, okay? We're on this job together. Let's cut it to it. Get the take. Get out of here. Not even a problem. Not even a problem. Los, los. Let us make off with our prize, and I will head into the vault. They said how much now? 11,000, right? Exactly, 11,000. <laughs> um, wait a minute. Oh yeah, it may have been 10. Was it 10? I honestly cannot remember. There was something about... Jeff, you're such a piece of shit. Because I remember what it was. Me too. And there's something really bad that's going to happen if we take more than that. But I don't think Brug is smart enough to remember. Brug, roll a general intelligence check. You got it. <laughs> Damn it. 18. Yeah, you remember, Brug. No, no. No, 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 no. A thousand and no more. It was 10,000. 10,000 <laughs> no more. He got it wrong. <laughs> Well, my friend, Rug, what is the harm in taking a little extra for ourselves? You aren't really getting paid. It's gonna trip a fucking world. <laughs> Look, I was just testing you, kid. I may not have remembered who that god was, but he's right. I gotta stay on the level. And this trigger happy numbskull here is gonna get us all wound up in jail. <laughs> hey, I ain't trigger happy, all right? I was actually just testing you, all right, kid? I gotta make sure that you're good for the job. You know, whatever the Stick next one... Stick to the script and get in the vault! Fair enough, kid. Are we out of initiative now? <laughs> yeah, there's no one else in this room to challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> the guard could come in. The guard could come in, but... All right, I'm gonna go into the vault, then. 
Yeah, Von Nisch is already in the vault, looking at the cases. Yeah, so you stepped over this woman's body. And now we play Deal or No Deal with Howie Mandel. They should all be labeled. This is a financial institution, not a game show. Yo, these PCs gotta get on a table talk game show, I'm just saying right now. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> These cases, they all seem like they're a standard size for transporting them, but they have different numbers printed on them, and each one has a unique serial number on it as well. And so you see ones that are 100, ones that are 500, 1,000, 5,000. 5,000 seems to be the biggest one you can find. That would have been an investigation check if you were still on initiative. So two 5,000 gold piece cases? That seems like the easiest way to do this to me. Yeah. Is that what you're going to do? What are you waiting for? Let's go. We each have one bag of holding no nope. you have one bag of holding between the three of you okay let's throw two of them in there let's get out of here okay wait so you're throwing the actual entire cases into the bag of holding or should we open the cases i'm not giving you advice either way i'm just asking what you're actually doing why don't we just take a look inside and we'll see what's inside a case i mean they could be mislabeled then we're gonna have ourselves a set of problems how much time do you think we have here let us just take our loot and go probably not enough to talk about how much time we have so why don't we open the case and if we, we don't have time to talk, then we don't have time to open the cases. They're locked, I presume. I'm going to try and open one. Yeah, they're locked. Add a little bit more tension to this situation. Sure. I'll take my thieves' tools, and I will attempt to open a case. Oh, that's not too great. That's only a 13 sleight of hand. 13 sleight of hand. You're going to have to try again next turn. But again, we're not in initiative order, so you just take a couple of minutes, and you are able to get these two cases open. And inside, you do see 5,000 gold, all lined up in rows. These cases are absolutely full of gold. See? The count is correct. Hey, better safe than sorry, okay? And hey, that's a bank joke for you for free. <laughs> I mean, stay on script. All right. So tell me exactly what you do next. I think it's time we just casually walked on out of here. Just casually walk on out? Mm, we should put them in the vault and shut the door. That seems a reasonable course of action. Yeah. You got a bright future ahead of you, kid. I'm like older than you, but that doesn't matter. Look, I haven't done these before for real or nothing, but I'm just saying that's what we should do. Is this ogre older than this elf? Oh, I forgot he was an elf. Never mind. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Kavatapi's probably, what, 300 years old? Yeah, okay, never mind. I mean, Kavatapi's better on the talks down to him. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you're gonna, gonna drag these people into the safe, close the door, and casually walk out of the bank. All three of you, please, as you walk out of this bank, make either a deception or performance check. Or stealth, also. 21 deception. 23, if I can use stealth. Nine. Okay. Yes, but what did you roll? Uh, it was a German pun. That's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. Oh, wait, no. These are proficient skills. I'm sorry. Ten. Deception. Yeah. So as you walk out, you start walking away from the bank, walk down the steps. The guard at the door says, I have a good one, fellas. And he lets the next person in. What do you want to do? I got to be honest with you. This seems a little too easy for me, but time to call Pinchy and get out of here, huh? Show up and keep walking. Yes. Keep walking. You hear from behind you, the person walks back out of the bank and says, there's no one in there. And the guard goes, what do you, what do you mean? Walk faster. And he goes back inside to check it out. Von Nisch just starts booking it down the street. Kavatapi will do the same. <laughs> yeah, same. This is a seedy part of town. I'm going to try and duck into some alleys and hide. I'm looking for the getaway car. Okay. I mean, there was a signal involved. Pinchy's looking for the signal. Who's got the bag? Who's got the bag? I got it right here. What are you waiting for? The guard behind you walks out of the bank. Oh and my god! <laughs> You're supposed to wave the bag in the air so we can get away. Oh. God damn it, Jeffy! <laughs> That's amazing that it wasn't a character. It wasn't a role or a... It was Jesus! Jeffy that messed it up. That's amazing. Von Nisch is just booking it down the street at this point. They don't even care. Von Nisch, you did get an opportunity for a stealth check in there. Just under the wire. So go <laughs> ahead and do that. God damn it, Jeffy! Alright, a stealth check. Oh no, it's a nine stealth. Yeah, you are looking for an alleyway to duck into, and this is a pretty long block. You don't see anything immediately, and you're kind of hiding behind a trash can, but you don't think it's very convincing. Gott verdammt! And the guard comes back out of the bank and says, you, stop them. I don't know who he's talking to, but... Cover top, you'll be like, what do you mean, what am I waiting for? I don't gotta wait for nothing. I gotta... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 
Shit, that's right, kid. My apologies, I forgot. This bag of Holden does everything. I'm gonna start waving it around. The moment you lift that bag up into the air, Pinchy drops out of the sky. Fucking thank fuck. Yeah, and doesn't even slow down. Give me an acrobatics check to hop on. Vanish, how far did you run? My speed is 30 feet. I could... Oh no, I'm level one. I can't cunning action. So only 30 feet. I'm not even a real rogue yet. I'm just a changeling with some skills. Got a 19. Uh, you said acrobatics? <laughs> acrobatics to hop onto this car. Cool. 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 That's a five. Okay. You grab on and he slowed down, but he didn't quite stop and land completely. And so you're just holding onto the back, trying to catch up with it. Kavatapi, you got in just fine into the back seat. Not even a problem. Not even a problem. And coming down the street towards you, Von Nisht. How far away is this guard? This guard is about two turns worth of action away from you. Oh, okay. I just want to know, is Von Nisht going to jump into this car? No. Okay. What? Keep booking it. What? Okay. <laughs> Why not? Because we're made. <laughs> they see the car taking off. I don't want to get caught. Will they escape? Find out next time. Oh, my God. So good. Ah, <sighs> all right. Hmm. Very harrowing, dramatic tale. I'm starting to feel some small motive affection for these fools. They are buffoons indeed, but it does not explain why I am pointed towards this device again and again. Well, the signal's coming from the only major port on this continent. Mm, that place which you are so hesitant to return to. I don't know how much needs to be said, but back in the place where we all came from, there's a war on all of these kingdoms fighting each other for power, and there are houses, the dragon-marked houses, that are using this war to enrich themselves. No matter where you turn... There's only vile people, vile, self-interested people that are looking to exploit others. Those like Rizian. Aye. <laughs> Foul. So as you've been walking and following this radio signal, it's now getting later in the day, and it will be night before too long. It's really warm and humid, but it's still the middle of winter, so it doesn't stay light that late. Perhaps a safer place to... Rest ourselves. Mm. Let us try and find one not so wet. Yeah, that'll be round of survival checks to find a good, nice, safe place to camp tonight. Six. Eleven. Come on. That's a twelve. Safe place to camp? Did you say random encounter? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if this were Theros, that would be it, but mm, this ain't Theros. No, it's not Theros. On that 12, you're able to find a clearing where there's some tree covering. You don't hear really any monsters or creatures around. It seems, you know, on a 12, safe enough to camp. And so if you want to get some camp going, tell me how that looks. Well, Istvan immediately piles up some wood, lays some stones out around it, and gets a fire going. And they'll take their makeshift anvil out of their bag of holding, along with whatever scraps of metal they accumulated from the old mine, and start pondering over it, thinking of what they might make. Cool. I think Alfonso will start unpacking and just quickly catch Luciano up on what's been going on. Just a highlight reel. We've made a new friend. It's been... Very nice. It reminded me how much I miss you. I look forward to bringing you back. Luciano trembles a little bit, clutches the fist a little bit, but very gently. And, Alfonso, you feel a little bit lightheaded, a little bit dizzy? Oh, it's been quite a day. I'm feeling a little weak. If you don't mind, I'd like to skip the first watch, eh? I don't know if we're doing watches at all. Mm, Alfonso, are you feeling ill? I think these things have gotten to me, but... Hopefully with some rest, I'll feel much better in the morning. Can I make a medicine check? I would like to also, or assist. Only a 10. I'm proficient. I got a 17. Yeah, on a 10, Alfonso is still covered head to toe in these little red dots. Mm. And on a 17, you're guessing that this illness is somewhat related to the earlier encounter with the dangerous bugs. I'm guessing it's somewhat related to poison. 
The poison from the bugs, yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to cast Lesser Restoration. No, I was going to lay hands. I thought I laid hands after he got damaged. You did. Yeah, but you can either, either or, or, okay. or remove uh, yeah. a condition. So I can cure disease with five points of lay on hands. I got it. I'll use my Lesser Resto. Okay. I go to and then see you do that and stop. Yeah. With that Lesser Restoration, you do feel better. You don't feel dizzy or... Ah, that's nice relief. I do think the sleep will be the next step. I have no objection to keep and watch. Hmm. A advanced tinkerer and a fine healer. Thank you for the compliment. I would compliment you back, but I am sort of stanco, very sleepy. Mm. Rest well, my new friend. You do the same, friend. Alfonso's out. Yeah, Warden could just do the whole night watch. Istvan, you gonna do anything with this downtime here? Hmm. Oh, you know, you gave me an idea from The Price is Right yesterday. We're sort of out in the wilderness. I wonder if I could make some bear traps. Okay, yeah. Hunting traps. Yeah. Yeah, then I'm gonna say you can, with these few hours here before you camp, craft one mundane hunting trap. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do then. We've only got a few days of food left. Maybe this will help us catch something out here. Okay. You go to bed? Yeah. After I finish up with that, I go to bed. Alfonso, in your sleep... You have sort of a vision. Mm -hmm. A brother? Is that to you? (laughs) Oh, no. Luciano. A brother. Where are you? I don't know. I'm scared, Alfonso. This is so good. Why are you scared? Tell me. What brings you fear? I don't know where I am, Alfonso. I don't know if I'll be okay. I don't know if you'll be okay. Luciano. Luciano, listen to me. You will be fine. Because you are with me. Always. You understand? Yes, I understand. And I will bring you back to the places you know. I will bring you back to Terra Valistas. I promise. He starts to fade away. Brother. That's his final parting word. As you wake up. Oh. Oh. Alfonso wakes up very sad. Yeah. Very determined. But your max HP reduction is not gone. Even though I cured my poison? Yeah. Well, cool. And you take a level of exhaustion as well. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you are sweating. You have unsteady hands. Well, Luciano's steady. This is my first time ever being exhausted. What does that mean? Disadvantage on skill checks. And ability checks. So, initiative... Well, that's poof, awesome. Weird. So it's not a disease or a poison. Okay, that's not good. It's not technically a disease, no. It's more of an affliction. Like a curse? Mm. Okay. And I know, I can kind of feel that you guys are like, let's fulfill the book, but... No, 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 no. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit like, I don't like that Lesser Restoration can just cure any disease just like that. So I rode around it a little bit. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... A level one paladin can cure any disease also. So Yeah, it's not so what's the good. point of diseases at all in the game? It's fucking stupid. Anyway, so the next day, dawns, you're here in the jungle, in this nice little clearing, made it through the night. How do you want to proceed today? Suppose we keep following that radio. All right. Yes, I'd like to be in a bit of a hurry today. Very well. Switch on the radio. So that's an arcana check, which at this point, I feel like anyone can make. Go ahead, Alfonso. Yeah, uh, 19. With disadvantage? Shit. Oh. Oh, yeah, with disadvantage, yeah, because the next roll is better. Yeah, great. Hell yeah. On a 19, yeah, you can get a pretty clear signal on some music as you set off in that direction. So this is sort of a mini game here. Everyone, please give me... I feel like that definitely can't stay. Between Disney and Metallica, we can't ever insinuate that we'd use their music. So what are we rolling, Jimmy? (laughs) Okay, so this is going to be a series of rounds here each round you can roll survival to move forward or something else if you feel like that'll help you can use your action in a different way and on warden's excellent medicine 17 check from yesterday i will tell you that additional medicine checks or uses of lesser restoration or lay on the hands will mitigate alfonso's symptoms cool which do appear to be quickening getting worse so what does everyone want to do for this first round i will go ahead and use my first round to use five points of lay on hands on alfonso we just rested this is to mitigate the disease yeah oh yeah so each round is a chunk of the day there's going to be a few rounds this traveling day this is abstracted time traveling oh, okay. okay yeah so you're going to use your lay on hands to help alfonso along and i'll say that will remove one of the levels of this affliction. It reduced him to no exhaustion for the time being. And so you're back to feeling pretty good, but you are treating symptoms right now. The root of it is still untreated. Got it. 
Okay. In that case, I think I'll try to roll history to see if anything looks familiar, if anything reminds me of something I may know about Stormreach. Maybe we're finding markings along the way that are indicating to us that we're heading in the right direction. All right, yeah, you can do that if you think that's your best use for roll right now. Cool, I'm going to roll a disadvantage. No, you're no longer exhausted. Oh, that's right, I'm no longer exhausted. Well, that's great, then that's a 23. Yeah, with a 23, I will say that you can't really tell if you're heading towards Stormreach. I mean, your best guess is that the radio is leading you towards Stormreach, but you are definitely rising in altitude, which would suggest that you're no longer in the flood swampy lands. Not much else that you would know about the middle of the jungle here in the forest, but on such a good roll, I will give advantage on this. You're going to do a survival roll, right, Isfan? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'll give you advantage on that because Alfonso rolled so hot. Be reassured, friend. We are headed in the right direction. Not only does the radio chirp in my ear, but we're getting to a higher level. From what I remember, Stormreach is in higher ground. Very good. You've got quite a knock with those gadgets we won. Thank you. And that's going to be a 19 survival. Wow. Yeah, okay. On a 19 survival, you're cutting your way through this jungle. You are moving swiftly. Things seem to be going really well. After a while, what appears to be a huge object falls out of a tree in front of you on the path. Ugh! What's this then? It's a giant fruit of some kind. And using that survival of 19, you're pretty sure it's probably safe. Seems edible. Would I be able to have any information on this? You can check it out, but I mean, 19 survival is pretty good. What have we here? Well, I suppose I won't need this trap I made after all. Yeah. So you're going to gather up some of this fruit? Yeah, I'll gather some of this giant fruit. There's enough here that you could take as much of it as you want, and you can eat it probably until it goes bad. I'll give you four or five days of rations on that. What sort of wild-ass giant jungle fruit is this, Jimmy? This is something that looks a little bit like a papaya, I would say. It's got fleshy, pinkish, orangish flesh. Um, And some... (laughs) I was going to call it a humango. A humango, yes. That's, oh, I love it. that's great. Yeah. So you, you gather up some humango and throw it in your bag. Oh, shit. That joke's terrible. That joke is really fucking bad. Yeah, it is. But I didn't have a name for it. You don't know what it's called. <laughs> You're in the middle of the jungle. This giant fruit fell on your path. Oh, the humanga. This is very nice. We used to use it with prosciutto back in Terravalistas. Not true. Luciano makes an okay sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the A-OK is there anything you Tervalistans won't eat with prosciutto? This fucking snob. Please, Jimmy, save us from this. Ah, prosciutto is a very nice cut of meat. Probably not. Okay, next round. Your exhaustion does go up by a level at the start of this round. Jeez. Shit. This round, I will go ahead and use to keep my exhaustion staved off lesser restoration. Okay. And it goes back down. In addition to that, do I make a skill check, or do I just do that? You can just do that. We're calling it like an action. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense. What else are we doing this turn? I'll go ahead and roll some nature to keep us headed in the same direction. All right. And that's going to be a 16. On a 16, you start to, as you walk, understand, as much as you can understand the way this curse works. You can feel that no matter how straight of a line you walk, you start to go off axis. You can't figure out which way it was that you were walking or supposed to be walking, but you can tell that the alignment of the trees and the shards in the sky with the sun and some of the visible moons, it's not all adding up. You're definitely not walking in a straight line. Mm, This confounded, disorienting curse. Mm. It wasn't like this in your time, was it? (sighs) No, it was not. What do you suppose happened between then and now? The giants ravaged this land. That is what happened. Isvan and Alfonso, you've been spending a lot of time around Professor Croswell the past couple of weeks, and he's been babbling a lot. So make a history check, because you might know a little bit about that. Dang, I rolled high in 19. 18. Yeah, in 19 and 18, you know that this is known as the Traveler's Curse. You already knew that, but this is a curse placed on the continent of Zendrik by the Sovereign, the Traveler. The Traveler is one of what's known as the Dark Six, an additional six Sovereigns in addition to the others of the Sovereign host. And if you want to follow up with a religion check, I can tell you a little bit more about the Dark Six. Sure. 17. 
21. Smart guy over here. Wow, shit. Yeah, on a 17 and a 21, you know that, especially you, Istvan, the Dark Six, they are just as much sovereigns as the others. It's really kind of a cultural thing that they're called the Dark Six. That's central Corvair bias Mm. that you're encountering there. But really, there are cultures all over the plain of Eberron that worship the Dark Six just like any other deity, and they don't consider them evil, or their alignment aligns with the Dark Six in some way. But you know that there's a lot of moral subjectivity going on here. So when the Traveler placed its curse on the continent of Zendrik. It's probably for a good reason. Do I know anything about Onatar's relationship with the Traveler as fellow sovereigns? I actually don't, so... Then it's fair to say that Istvan probably wouldn't. Yeah, Onatar is the father of the sovereign known as Kol Karan and the Dark Six sovereign known as the Keeper. Okay, but no relationship to the Traveler. Yeah, the Traveler is kind of a mysterious figure, not as related to the rest of them. A lot is unknown about the Traveler. Fair enough. And the Traveler does use it pronouns as opposed to the other ones which are gendered. Was that everyone for this round? I don't think I've rolled anything other than those knowledge checks. So I can roll survival? Yeah, the survival is what's moving you forward. So that's a good choice. Do I get advantage from the Warden's knowledge? I think so, yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay, uh, only a 13. Only a 13, okay. It's fun, maybe a little distracted considering these theological implications. Yeah, as you're having this very heady conversation, Warden, you know all these names of the sovereigns that you're talking about here, mm-hmm. pointing them out in the sky. Each of them is associated with a different constellation within the larger draconic deity constellation groups. And Istvan, you step on something that feels very strange. As I said... It can all be traced back to their insolence, and thus the heavens responded in kind. Istvan, how tall are you? Four foot two. Wow, that happened very fast then. About two inches of your forehead is now sticking out above this quicksand. Yup. Oh, it was a very fascinating conversation, but please help me up. Where out of here. did you go? Look down, look down. Alfonso, quick. Can I try and fucking grab them? Yeah, go ahead and make a strength check. Alfonso's going to immediately launch Luciano. And Alfonso, if you're helping with Luciano, this can be with advantage, Andy. Cool. Flat strength, or would this be athletics? It's up to you. It just says strength, but I would call it athletics. Yeah. Either way, it's going to be fine. That is a 22. Yeah. Absolutely. You pull them right out, right up out of there. That was fast. That was just a very brief impediment to your travel. And we're moving on to the next round. (laughs) When you're traveling with very strong people, quicksand's not much of a problem. Amazing. (laughs) My entire stone arms reach into this pit and I pull them out in my grasp. Are you all right? Uh, you have my thanks. I've got a bit of grime under the apron, but I'll live. Uh, forgive me. Let's try and find another way around this mess. All right, next round. Alfonso, you get your level of exhaustion. I'll use another land hands this turn. Jeff, you can go ahead and do something else. Okay, cool. I'm going to use Arcana to just intently listen to the radio and see if there are more clues that we should be listening for in terms of something to help us maintain a course of direction or look for landmarks. Okay, sure. Cool a good mod and it's a good roll 26 jesus with a 26 you realize that you might know more about the construction of the radio than you previously thought and with a little bit of tinkering you can really just zero in on the accuracy you practically use this thing as a compass at this point it points directly towards wherever the signal's coming from love it i'm going to roll survival for this leg of the journey natural 20 23 nice yeah Excellent. Yes. And as you're walking, you come across a thing on the ground. You almost kick it, but you notice it in time. Something sticking up out of the dirt in a small crater. And on that 23, you look down at this thing. This is golden crystal. Very small, but a golden crystal. Is this some sort of dragon shard? Mm. Alfonso, come have a look at this strange thing. Okay, what have you found? Roll Arcana. 22. Yeah, the 22, this most definitely is a Sybaris dragon shard. Not unlike the one that Warden has in his possession, but very tiny and in a crater. On those great rolls, yeah, this thing fell out of the sky. You've heard stories. This tends to happen. Little ones all the time. You might come across a Sybaris dragon shard in a high-end shop in Sharn, but they're little. And this is one that might look just like that. The one that Warden carries around is 
extraordinary, very huge. Okay. Yeah, I think we should take it. Okay. This is a blessing. I agree. I think it is a good sign. Warden, if you want to roll Arcana, I'll tell you something else, too. With advantage because of the 22 that Jeppy just rolled. Okay. That's an at 20. Oh. Plus four. Nice. Yeah, 24. This very small dragon shard fits in the palm of your hand, and you feel this power emanating from it. On a 24, I'll tell you, if you crush it in your hand, you will regain a sorcery point. Oh, shit. Single use? Yes. My friend, if I may hold on to this in a dire situation, it may be of use. Yep, and just a quick mechanical clarification, you cannot go above your maximum sorcery points. You use it as if you're using, like, a potion or whatever. That does seem quite impressive. Alfonso, you're a bit more of an arcanist than I am. If I found some good quality metal, and I were to incorporate that fine crystal shard into a weapon, or something of the like, do you suppose, theoretically, it could have a more persistent effect? I think you may be onto something very clever here, my good friend. Probably worth investigating, though I will say I have no use for a weapon. I have Luciano with me at all times, and once he is gone, I will have no use for a weapon at all. That life, hopefully, will be behind me. So, it is not valuable to me, but a worthy experiment, nonetheless. Perhaps something you could use. I shrug, I give a tilt of the head towards the warden. Our new friend seems to have an affinity for the powers of Sybaris. Think maybe he might benefit from it? Something to consider. Let's be on our way. Yeah, and just to put a button on that, on that... 22 from before, Alfonso, you would know that in a production setting, Sybaris Dragon Shard is used to enhance innate magic. So most magic items are made of Eberron Dragon Shard, but Sybaris Dragon Shards are used for sometimes sorcerers or people with dragon marks. Okay. Next round. I guess I get an exhaustion back. Yeah, you do. I'll use another lesser restoration. How many of those do you have? Three. Okay. One left. I'm going to see if I can use maybe some acrobatics, get up into the canopy and see if I can maybe see a clearer path ahead now that we have a fairly good heading with being tuned into the radio so well, if that's reasonable. Yeah, you can do that. That one. Istvan goes to get up into the trees and I guess slips and falls out of them. Oh. I think that's for Jimmy to say. Maybe something worse. Maybe something worse. Who knows? No, that happens. And I think that the worse <laughs> is that whoever, if anyone makes a survival check this round, it'll be with disadvantage. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, I'm done with my turn as well, so. Yeah. Have fun, Warden. Let's go nature or religion. Well, I feel like I already use nature. You can use it more than once. This isn't really like a formal skill challenge. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and roll nature again. And despite... Istvan's stumble. I will try and regather our heading here. Okay, that's a nine. Oof. Okay, yeah. You walk for a little while, and you see something ahead on the ground. Cool. And you think it might be another Sybaris Dragon Shard. Of course. But as you approach, it's the same crater from before, which is concerning because it's been a couple hours, and now it's like mid-afternoon. <sighs> My thoughts exactly. And through the opening in the trees above you, the light blinks out for a second and then comes back. Roll a perception check. Everybody or? Anyone. Just a seven here. Nine. Fourteen. Yeah, on that fourteen, you look up and see that something has flown very quickly between the sun and you and then continued on its way. And on a fourteen, this thing looks absolutely huge. Some kind of bird. But with that nine nature earlier, it's just a little big bird. I know what that was. And it's out of view now. All right, let's do one more round. I feel like my skill checks aren't going to be as good as Alfonso's, so I'll dump my last lay on hands. Cool. I guess I'll roll nature just to see if I can get us back on track and away from this circular situation we're in. Okay. And at 20, so 25. Jeez. Fuck, thank yeah. you. How can A? And Isvan, if you're going to be our navigator this round, you can roll with advantage. I'm going to try. Okay, dirty 20. On a dirty 20, it's a good sign, right, that you haven't seen any of this before. This looks like unfamiliar territory, although the entire continent could be unfamiliar territory. But you start to see the trees thin out a little bit ahead of you, almost like there's this trail blazed through the trees. And as you continue on this clearer section, there's rustling from the trees nearby. I don't want to just drop this on you so make a perception check yeah i put hands on my weapons and proceed cautiously perception's a dirty 20 yeah on a dirty 20 there's a staggeringly tall figure approaching you 
from the brush. And that hasn't quite made it out of the tree line yet. And actually on that dirty 20, you can tell this looks like a giant, easily 15 feet tall. Their footsteps are crushing the brush below. Careful now. There's something big coming this way. Should we hide? This one, that is something huge. We should take cover. As you say, I'll try and hide. Okay. Same. It's a 15 stealth from me. It's a 21 stealth. Man, I'm rolling hot on this girl. <coughs> Jeez, I got an 18. <laughs> Dang. Dang indeed. That's great. Warden, I was going to say, in this natural setting, you can roll flat because you look kind of like a pile of rocks. Oh, wait, fuck. I have to roll disadvantage. You don't, though. You can just use that if that was just a flat roll. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Go with it, yeah. All right. This giant emerges from the trees onto this trail. They are over 15 feet tall, wearing like a robe, almost, a toga type thing. And they say, I thought I heard something over here. Is this in common? No, I guess it's in giant. Would I be able to know what kind of giant or what they're saying? Do you know giant? Yep. You do. Common Draconic Elvis giant. Then you did hear what they just said, and everyone can go ahead and roll insight on this person. (coughs) Warden, roll with disadvantage. Oh? That's only going to be a six from Ispan. Nine. Ten. Okay. You don't see any weapons on this figure. Okay. This person has a bag slung over their shoulder as if they were maybe foraging out here. You can't really tell. They say guess it was nothing and then they turn and start walking on the trail away from you did the voice sound familiar you saw the whole person it's not a familiar person oh it's a giant right is it a kind of giant that i would recognize oh yeah that's right on that 10 yeah this is a hill giant this isn't one of the biggest or scariest looking giants okay but it is among the variety that were around when they were all around a descendant of one This looks to be a giant commoner. I just keep my hand up until they're gone. All right. They walk away down this path, stomping, stomping, stomping. All right. So you evaded notice by this giant. What do you want to do next? What do we do? Do we wait longer? We should avoid wherever that giant is headed. But it's headed. One is bad enough. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking One is bad enough. You think but <laughs> more is worse. Like I know your character speaks slowly, but I always think <laughs> you're done fucking speaking and I start talking and you're like I know it's but. very, very fun. <laughs> One Was there something yeah, I wanted to add, Alfonso. It's heading in the direction that the radio is taking us. But you think there are more giants ahead? I don't know if we can handle that. Your point is well made. But I can't stay here much longer. I'm not feeling well. As you're standing here, you start to hear a buzzing sound coming from behind you on the trail. The fuck out of here. Can I see if it's a familiar buzzing sound? Yeah, that'll be nature. Okay, that's a 14. A 14 will do it, though. Alfonso's interested, too. Nat 20. Oh. I got a 25. I would like to know exactly how many bees <laughs> and how long all of their wings are, please. Sure. So they're not bees. They sound like there's a lot of them okay. coming from the direction that you are coming from. From within the tree line. Yeah, but also back down the trail, down yeah. this very light incline that you have been making your way up for a while. So you get the sense that these bugs that you dealt with earlier in the day are still present in this area. Right. I'm not waiting for you to decide whether the frying pan is better than the fire. I'm taking off up the road, and I take off up the road. I think that's a fine plan. (sighs) Very well. Signore Warden, you are kind of like a giant. Very big. Do you think maybe you get along with the giant if we talk to it? No. Ah, that's right. You do not like giants, huh? No, no. It's a no for you on the giant, huh? They are my ancient enemy. Maybe these new ones are nicer. (laughs) Everybody learn lesson after a time, huh? You, Alfonso, are... Are you coming or not? Quite the optimist. (laughs) I'm already following after his fun. Alfonso's saying this while scurrying with his smaller feet and legs. Try not to shout if you can help it, Master Istvan. So, 
You're making your way up this road. Alfonso, you have one level of exhaustion? Currently one. I'm out of lay on hands. I spent them all on the skill challenge. All right. So, Istvan, if you're leading, go ahead and give me a survival check. Or a thing. I would like to help them by keeping a fucking eye out. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. That's advantage for Istvan. If that gives me advantage, that's going to be a 22. A 22. Excellent. So with that 22 survival check, you're heading on this trail. And as you're walking, this trail is getting a little bit wider. You feel like this is not so much a natural trail, like one that may have been blazed by animal migration patterns. This is probably something that was put here on purpose. Also on that 22, go ahead and follow it up with a perception check. Sure. 19. Okay, I mean, 19, up ahead in the distance, you can see this figure of this giant has stopped again on this road to collect some herbs or different types of greens from these plants on the side of the road. Quite a ways up ahead, and they do not appear to have noticed you. Are they maybe a mage of some kind? Can I tell that? I did say robes, but they don't look to be wizard robes. This is very much traditional kind of clothing. Okay. Mostly looks like a giant commoner. You don't see any armor. You don't even see a notable weapon on this figure. Okay. On those rolls, do any of us see any animals nearby? Like, not giant killer bugs that are trying to eat Alfonso, but... Any sort of wildlife of any kind? You know, on those great rolls, you can hear and sort of see there are birds around, there are things skittering through the brush, but nothing huge, nothing that seems to be posing a threat to you. Kind of just the general din of wildlife. Cool. Is there a bird nearby? Yeah, there is a bird nearby. What are you What are you looking for? This is mostly a DM is curious what this is about bird. <laughs> I think this is speak with animals is what this is about. This is speak with animals, motherfuckers. <laughs> okay. I want to look out towards some bird of some kind and wave my hand in its direction and cast speak with animals. You. You there. Hello. Okay, yeah, so you see this bird. This is not like a sparrow. This is a big jungle bird. Oh, sick. Nice. Yeah, maybe something more like... Is it Toucan Sam? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Give me that breakfast cereal. Follow your nose. Oh, my God. Please say that's what it sounds like. (laughs) Shut up. Yeah, I should give it a funny voice. Hold on. Oh, me? <laughs> yes! Yes! Yes. <laughs> yes. <sighs> yes. Hello, friend. We are strangers here. This bird flutters down nearer to you, not within your reach, but a branch near you. And you can see it's got this huge plume on its head. It's red and blue and yellow. What, friend, may we call you? The bird kind of cocks its head. What? Very well. Tell us, that giant ahead of us, are there more in this area? Oh yeah, many more. (sighs) How close? Hmm, not too far from here. Up the hill, a village of giants, but many, many more in the distant areas around. Thank you, friend bird. Ask the bird if they are nice giant. Before you go, my traveling companion would like to know if these giants may be considered friendly. I suppose that would be somewhat of a subjective judgment. I'm only a bird. <laughs> Indeed, yes. A very kind and noble bird. I would never had any issue with them. Very well. Have you ever seen them try to destroy others like my friends or I? other two-legged individuals in combat or otherwise. Hmm. This bird gestures to his own two legs. I understand your concerns. Hmm. (laughs) It would seem to me that the small folk give them more trouble than the other way around. I see. You are very wise, friend bird. Oh, thank you. And I thank you. Will that be all? What do we got here? A minute on this bad boy? Probably. Ten minutes. Oh, shit. Never mind. So, where are you going? (laughs) (laughs) Ah, inquisitive. Very well. My friends are looking for a place called Storm Reach. Hmm. Storm. It is the rainy season. A lot of storms around. I don't know of a place called Storm Reach, though. Then let me leave you with this, if I may. There are many giant insects that are preying upon my friend. I imagine others, birds perhaps even, 
There are some that appear to be trailing behind us. If you see them, continue along this path. Why? Give a loud call, won't you? Sure. Like this one? Yes. Yes. Will that be good? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, man. Did the giant look over here? Why is that bird making that racket? Did you say something to hurt its feelings? Yes, like that. Thank you. By the way, though, did you see bugs? Oh yes. Oh, which way? I point back to the way we came. Thanks, pal. And he takes flight out of the tree and flies towards the bugs. Ah! You are welcome. I turn to the rest of the party. Our new friend, Bird, says that there are many more giants in this area. He described them as a whole village nearby. Are they nice giants? He seemed ill-equipped to describe them as so, but it did not seem like they were hostile. Then perhaps if we skirt around the periphery, they won't mind too much, eh? Uh, as you're standing here having this conversation, Alfonso, you're going to take another level of exhaustion here, and you start to feel... Mm. No, I'm going to blow my last lesser restoration. There it goes. Okay, so now you're still at one level of exhaustion. You start to feel these aches and pains through your body, but as you use lesser restoration, you go back down to just generally feeling pretty shitty. Great. Two is not good. We need to do something about this. And I have a feeling I know what we're supposed to do, but I really don't want to do it. What's this giant still doing? <laughs> They're rustling through some leaves, picking some berries, drawing an animal they see, you know. A wee consideration. It's been a long time since your war. Things may have changed. Exactly as I said. I look to all of the runes on my arms and the tattered moss shawl that now covers only my shoulders. <sighs> I accept that I am someone out of my time, but... How would you ask me to forgive the atrocities of generations of evil? No one said you had to forgive anybody. Just don't attack them. It's pretty simple. And furthermore, friend, I'm not feeling very good at all. It's getting worse. We need to get going. We must solve this. If neither of us, or even Istvan, has the capability to remedy this, Cursed disease. Perhaps it is our fate we seek wisdom elsewhere. As I look towards the giant meandering ahead of us. I don't know what your history is, or if, over time, the world you were created into saw improvements. But it's not impossible. I'll say this for myself. The only reason that I still draw breath is because I think I can make things a little better or die in the attempt. Perhaps time has made your old adversaries better than they were. I give Warden a pat on the thigh, which is about as high as I can reach. I think it's time we find out. And Alfonso's going to just head towards the giant, waving. So you're waving. You're... Signore giant, I'm going to make myself known. <laughs> oh, All right. no. Yeah. Okay. Do you, you actually said Signore giant? I don't think so, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but I am waving. I am making myself known. Okay. When this giant notices you, they appear startled and start to back up a little bit as you approach. And they say in broken common, don't hurt. Don't hurt. I give a courteous bow. No, no. I will do no such thing. No hurting. Help? Help? I approach this giant. And in giant, I speak. Hail, wanderer. My friend before you is gravely ill. A swarm of giant insects has preyed upon him, and neither my divine magic nor his medicinal artifice are able to remedy this. They look at you for a little while and take in you and the whole trio here, and then they say, what are you? Directly to you. Yeah. You're with these small folk, but what are you? Oh, no. Is there a phrase in giant for weapon designed to kill giants? <laughs> yeah, it's Green Warden. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, he's not deceitful or anything like that. I am a Green Warden of the Ancients. It's a nat one on a history check. Great. But I do not come before you in this moment as an enemy. I simply seek to help. 
it's not wise to travel in the lowlands during the rainy season. This illness spreads fast. Come, we have to go. Call me Gurk. Gurk? Gurk. Oh, boy. I turn back. They wish us to follow. I told you so. I forget, does Isfan also speak Elvish or not? They do not, but you can say this in Elvish if you'd like. Okay, I will say in Elvish back to Alfonso. Stay on guard. That is a fair piece of advice. And we follow. All right. So Gurk leads you on this road. And as you travel, this road continues to get wider and wider and easier to walk on. And you are going up this little bit of an incline. And it gets to be pretty steep at one point. But pretty soon you come up over the tree line and you can see around you. For miles around, you see the treetops, other hilltops peeking out of trees. You see a few mountains in the distance. And you see in the direction off to the side of where you're heading, you see an enormous volcano with a plume of smoke rising into the sky. Fuck, can I roll history or nature on that? Sure, what do you want to know? If it's old enough that I would recognize or know about it. I don't know if it would be notable to you. Okay. On the Taurus beard, what a beautiful mountain. Oi. Oi. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't say but you, <laughs> Volkos would say, Oi, look at that. <laughs> You could say I as if you picked it up from Istvan. The cadence is infectious. I know. Yeah, no. White the sight, indeed. Also at this altitude, you can see the constellations in the sky clearer than you've seen them in a little while. And even though it's mid-late afternoon, these constellations shimmer through the haze, through the clouds. Not that they're themselves moving, but the shimmer and the sparkling of these shards in the sky do give this appearance of the constellations dancing. So after a while of following Gurk, this dense underbrush from the trees around you and all this moss that gives way to this thick, lush grass. And you're on this hillside. You see this village come into view, and as you get closer, the village gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a small village, but it's huge. It's a huge, small village. Appears to be a farming village, some fields, a windmill, Mm -hmm. you know, dirt roads, these big shacks constructed of logs and stones, but they also themselves seem to be built on top of a foundation of more ancient-looking, permanent, ruined structures. And on the way into town, off the side of the road, you see this giant shepherd tending to giant goats. So Gurk leads you through this village and into this... Wait, are they giant goats? They are giant goats. Fuck yeah. Oh, right. man. Fucking hill giant herd going here over <laughs> Gorgeous here. George. So Gurk leads you through this village and into this small hut with a thatched roof. It's small by giant standards. It's really still this huge thing. And inside this hut is this glowing, bubbling cauldron casting strange shadows. There's unfamiliar smells. There's dried herbs hanging from the beams. And in there is a giant woman wearing this very similar traditional garb to Gurk, but with maybe a wreath of different types of leaves and herbs and berries, a headdress made of the same types of things, and there's bones and different types of very natural decor in here. Shamanistic. Yes, shamanistic stuff going on in here. Gurk enters and says to this giant shaman, In giant, Zilda, these small folk were wandering the lowlands, this very small one. He needs our help. And Zilda says, What is it they were doing in the lowlands this time of year? Trying not to make it too much like a Lachia, but it would be a similar cadence. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Girk translates into common that last bit. What is it you were doing in the lowlands? This is a dangerous time of year. While you're doing that, Zelda is going to get together different herbs and things in a big bowl, start to mix up some kind of concoction. Okay. Well, okay. Let me start from the beginning. My name is Alfonso Carlucci Roccatella. I come from Terra Valistas. Oh, boy. And then Alfonso will literally say every single detail that has happened between all four games so far. Yeah, and as that's happening and she is mixing up this concoction... You start to feel sicker and sicker. <laughs> no. wait, 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 wait. As she's mixing it or applying it? She's mixing it, you're talking, and you take another level of exhaustion. As in, you're talking for too long. No, no not too long, just long. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. You're at exhaustion 20. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're dead. You have died. You're dead several times only. Alfonso, lie down, lie down. I don't talk so fast. 
No. But wait, they have to hear about the rope bridge. All right, I can tell them about the rope bridge. Save your strength. Alfonso lays down and calms down. So Zilda finishes stirring up whatever she's doing here and brings over to you this giant bowl. You know, you could probably hold it with your arms outstretched, Alfonso. Uh, and she says, drink up. Okay. Small sip, I'd imagine. Aye? Yeah. Good soup. No, drink the whole thing. Alfonso's gonna do it. I'd imagine Warden might need to help stabilize the bowl as Alfonso <laughs> tries to tip it carefully to not lose a lot of liquid. At first, I simply am watching and then realizing that you're having trouble, I will assist. <laughs> yeah. Do I need to roll something to drink this beverage because the bowl is so unwieldy? You could roll an athletics check. Okay. I thought he was gonna have to make a fucking con save. All right. Andy gave me the help action, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with advantage. Okay, well, it was a nat one, and then it was a 15. You're almost crushed under the weight of this huge bowl, and it's scalding hot. <laughs> Burn myself on the fucking soup. <laughs> but then Warden steps in and helps you tip some of this medicinal liquid into your mouth. As soon as it touches your lips, you feel a little bit better. You do drop one level of exhaustion. But Zelda says, the illness will subside overnight. You should rest here. And she says this in common? No, she says this in giant. Okay. Warden would understand, but Gurk can translate it. Somewhat broken, but still intelligible giant common translation. You won't get very far, though, if you continue on that way. It is the rainy season. Those bugs will come out every time it rains. Get some rest tonight, and we can talk next steps in the morning. In giant, I will say... Thank you for your aid. Warden, I'm not familiar with giant custom, but you think you could ask if there's anything they require from us as remuneration for their hospitality? My companions and myself wish to ask if there is anything we can do in return. Don't worry about that right now. I'm a healer. That's what I do. Very well. So as Alfonso's lying there resting, starting to get a little later, the sun's going down, Zilda will ask you, Warden, in giant. So, obviously, these are small folk, but what are you? Surely, a wise elder like yourself to know the history. What history? I come from far gone time. An ancient time where giants and elves and dragons warred against each other. I am a Green Warden. I've never heard of the Green Wardens. Were you constructed by giants? Ancient giants, surely, with their magnificent artifice. No, you are mistaken to believe so. I have come here seeking no ill will, simply as an aid to my friends whom you have helped. But I was given the breath of life by the ancient and powerful elven druids so that the Green Wardens may fight against the oppression of their giant masters. Oh, that. Yes. I think I may have heard stories from those days long time ago. Many generations. How is it you still live? That I credit only to the stars above. I pull out the Sybaris dragon shard, the big one. Her eyes widen as this gold glowing orb reflects in them. Where did you get this? As my friend who is now resting has told you. (laughs) They were searching for ancient things in the ruins of an ancient place. Far to the south of here, beyond the lowlands. That is where I found this. Well, what does it do? Why do you carry it with you? The extent of its ability I have yet to discern, but it came from the ancients, and thus it is able to enhance my power. Very interesting. But now... It's getting late. There'll be plenty of time tomorrow to ponder these great mysteries. You should rest. Before you go, answer me this one question. What would your stories make your people here in this village believe of those ancient conflicts? The ancient 
giants found themselves in many wars, battles across the universe, but it was the ones here that were the most damaging to them. Ultimately, their downfall was a lack of wisdom. That and dragons. Yes, that much <laughs> is truth. I was there. Of course. So she makes sure you're comfortable. Three of you are on this giant medical bed. Plenty of room for all three of you to sleep. One big bed. One huge bed. Like, absolutely enormous bed. That is a reference for NADPOD fans, and I am sorry. Okay. And she retires to another room. Is it alright if we wander around a bit? I'm not feeling ill myself, and I hope you don't mind if I take a look around your village out of curiosity. She doesn't speak that language. I would relay this. Yeah, so Warden can translate this. People in this village, they get skittish around small folk. We've had some issues. Be careful. Small folk from across the sea? believe so. Can I actually describe what Rizian's crew looks like? Adventury, mercenary type, jungle explorer, gear, small folk like that. Well, they're certainly part of the issue, but no, mainly it's the ones who seek to strip the ground of its treasures. Those are the ones who have been causing issues. Dragon shard miners. Yeah, are you making a distinction between treasure hunters and miners? There? Yes. Okay, okay. Very well. Istvan, I don't think it would be wise. Whether they be your kind or others, it would seem that this place has dealt with their share of aggression from those who would seek to plunder the earth. All right, then. Okay, so Istvan's not going anywhere. Istvan is still probably going to wait for a bit and then try and sneak out of this cottage. Roll stealth. Yep, sure. Oh, boy. No, that's not great. Eight. Okay. So if I have centuries rest up, that goes against my passive perception, right? What's your passive perception? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah, Alfonso automatically fails because he's unconscious. But Warden, you would notice Istvan jump out of bed. It's probably like an eight-foot drop down to the floor. Yeah. Where do you intend on going, Istvan? The hour is quite late. Need to think on some things. I must commune with Onatar. And for that, I need a fire and my tools. How far away is the volcano? The volcano seems to be pretty far away. That's not what I had in <laughs> mind, but that's cool. Very well. Be careful. I shall try. Alfonso considers you a dear friend. I myself, though only knowing this company for so long, do as well. Be Careful. I'm not worthy of your concern, but I accept it graciously, and I slip out the door. I don't know what the hell this is about. Make a athletics check to push this door open. Okay. Yeah, 18. <laughs> oh, yeah! Yeah, without an issue, you're able to push this door open and get outside and push it back closed again. Looking around, is there a central fire or anything like that in this little village? This village seems to be asleep. It's dark, all the animals are sleeping outside. You don't see any people out. Okay, then in that case, I'm going to just head outside of the gate or wall or any sort of limit. Just head outside of the village and start a fire out there. Okay, make a survival check as you exit the boundaries of this village. Sure. Okay, that's an eight. Yup. Yeah, on an eight, you exit the bounds of this village, and even though you only took maybe ten paces out of the village, you you can't see it anymore. Oh, no. (laughs) Very concerning. Even with your dark vision, you look back in the direction, you're still on the road, but the village isn't in sight, which is strange. Oh, Oh, no! (laughs) I stay on the road, on the side of the road, and I start my fire, and I start doing some work. I don't know how detailed I could get with these things, but I think I would like to start making some sort of navigator's tools, if that's possible. Does it say what's in the navigator's tools? Instruments used for navigation at sea. A sextant, a compass, calipers, a ruler, parchment, ink, and a quill. I'd like to Try making at least the compass and maybe the sextants are still good if you can see the stars. Yeah, that's true. All right. I'll say this will take three sessions like this to get a completed set of navigator's tools. Yeah. I start working on them. And suppose while I'm doing this between taking pieces out of the fire and shaping them, I at least try to let myself fall into this meditative state between the taps of the hammer and reach out to Anasar and put out there, although I don't think 
they would say out loud, I'm more lost than I've ever been. I don't know if it's worth it to you to help me find my way. I don't know where I'm going with these people. I don't know if I want to go back to Stormreach. Back to Corvair, there's nothing for me there. Where are you pointing me? What do you want me to do? All right, make a Smith's Tools check. Okay. Nice. That's going to be a 22. Excellent. Now roll Religion with Advantage. Okay. Also nice, dirty 20. Nice. Fantastic. Now roll Survival with Advantage. Okay. Also a dirty 20. Fantastic. Jeez. You love to see it. You look back once more in the direction of this giant village, or so you thought, and through the smoke rising from your own fire, you notice it rises up and with your line of view from your perspective meets the smoke coming up from above the tree line from the volcano in the distance. And looking back down from this plume of smoke, you again can see the very tip of the windmill of the giant village in the distance. I finish my work, put out my fire, gather up my tools and the various fiddly bits of this still-to-be-assembled navigator's equipment. I stuff it in my bag of holding and I head back to the village and try to slip back into the cottage. Very nice, yeah. Roll over that strength check from before. You can get back in. If you want to do it stealthily, you can try that or just... I will try. I don't want to cause too much. That's the same eight. (laughs) Yeah, Warden, you hear them come back in. Make a loud grunt as I shove open the door. (laughs) Come on yet, blasted thing! I see this, but I don't even think the light from beneath my helm would even flicker at it. I simply acknowledge it. That's all I wanted to do. All right, you go to bed. Warden, overnight, shortly before dawn, you see a glow coming from just beyond the village. This red-orange glow, dim light beyond the village, casting shadows of these buildings back onto the ground. Stir at this. Can I try and ascertain what this might be at all? You can roll perception, I'll give you a little more, or nature. Sorry, am I seeing this from inside the building? I should have used the phrase out the window, yes. So I will get up and try and look out towards the sky. I'll use nature on this. Okay. Oof, that is only a 12. On a 12... You can see that this source of light seems to be pretty big, and it's flickering. Is there anybody else up yet? You said it's still night. Yeah, it's still night, and it's, you know, before dawn. It's too early for this to be sunrise. This is a strange red-orange glow coming from beyond the village. Okay, I will try and go outside and see if I can get a better look. Okay, go ahead and make an athletics check. Open this door. 19. Yeah, on a 19, you can do that easily, and you start to walk in the direction of this fire, this glow. (laughs) Only as far as I can go within the perimeter of this village. Yeah, so you don't need to walk out of the village at all. You can walk closer to the edge of the village, and you see definitely what does appear to be a fire, not too far off the village. There's a couple of trees on fire, and it does appear to be approaching. (sighs) Oh. No. I will turn back and try and wake the party. Wake up. Wake up. Something is happening. A fire we must warn these people. Fire. Saw smoke rise fire. Ah, oh, right. Let's be about it then. As I get up, how am I feeling? Alfonso, you would have had a long rest. It's almost dawn. You feel pretty much completely better. You're still a little under the weather, but no mechanical disadvantage here. Okay. And you said I completed my long rest? Well, all three of you did. Yes. I'm going to start looking for any of these giants that we've seen before. Okay. Well, you know that Zilda is inside the same hut as you in a different room. Oh, okay. I will try and find her. You can open up her door or knock on the door. What do you want to do? She's behind a door. I will start pounding at the door. Zilda, Zilda, there is a fire approaching the village. You hear some movement from inside Zilda's room and she opens the door and she says, what's going on? What's, what's, what's the problem? There's a fire nearby approaching this village. She looks out the window and sees the glow. Oh, not again. Does Zilpa have a tiny saute pan that would be a walk-sized for a medium-sized creature? Would you have a saute pan that's about this big? What? I mean, I have a small saute pan, yes, but I'm just asking (laughs) because 
<laughs> she seems to be like an herbalist. I don't know if she has something like that. Where the fuck is this going? <laughs> I'm going to use it to bang on it and make a bunch of noise is okay, where yeah. I'm going with this. I'm just looking for something I can actually hold. You can find like a cast iron bowl, a little smaller than the one given to Alfonso. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I grab that up. I head out into the town square and I start making noise with that. Fire! And Isvan, as you exit the hut again and start to move into the center of town, you can see the fire is spreading very quickly towards the village and it has spread to a small cottage on the edge of town. The thatched roof is now on fire. Okay. And giants are starting to gather in the street. What do you mean? Not again. Uh, fire elementals. I'll explain later. We have to act now. And she goes out and starts hollering to the village. Fire! Fire! I'll follow her. Are there those among you who are able to defend themselves against such creatures? We try. Any aid you can lend us would be much appreciated. You answered the call to aid. My friend, when we came to this place... You talk very slowly. And now we shall return this in kind. I turn to Istvan and Alfonso. Prepare for battle. That could be a really great place to end the session. That's an awesome line. That's an excellent cliffhanger. Albeit one that came to a crawl. Let's... Prepare. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> this is the problem with talking being a free action. For battle. See, Andy? Giants aren't that scary. Yeah. <laughs> you really targeted Warden with a lot of this one. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm proud of Warden. Warden got over their shit pretty quickly. Well, you take all of that bias and you just put it in a bag of holding and forget about it. <laughs> Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me. And edited by Scala with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Thanks to our Patreon supporters and a special thanks to our Holy Avengers, May, Jake, Chris, and John. For $5 a month on our Patreon, you can access every episode of Table Talk, our post-game recap show. Couldn't fit all that prejudice in a Heward's handy haversack for sure. <laughs> no. That shoddy bullshit? Absolutely not. <laughs> thanks for listening. <laughs>